Russian dictator Vladimir Putin, having become embroiled in a war of attrition in Ukraine, has found himself in a trap. On the one hand, he urgently needs a new mobilization to continue the aggression. On the other, he has no resources for it. This was reported by the Russian associate of the Czechist Igor Strelkov Z-War correspondent Maxim Kalashnikov. The propagandist, having visited the combat zone, spoke about the colossal fatigue in the ranks of the Russian occupation forces. The troops are terribly tired now. It's obvious they weren't replaced since then, as they were mobilized. I saw this fatigue, Kalashnikov said. He specified that people need to be replaced with fresh cannon fodder, but the Kremlin is afraid to decide on mobilization. And there are more than enough reasons for this fear. There are no resources for a new recruitment of soldiers. This whole undertaking could turn into a large uprising. If we continue the campaign, the war against Ukraine, then we need to conduct a new mobilization. If we call up 300,000 today, I'm not even talking about 500,000. In this system, it will be impossible to dress or equip them. Am I right? Or am I an extremist? If we cannot supply the active army with everything it needs now, then calling up another 300,000 will be a disaster. They don't want to call up reservists. They are trying to get by with big money, hiring for money. But this is not a solution to the problem. There are too few people. The propagandist said he specified that commanders are literally driving half-treated cripples on crutches to the front due to a colossal shortage of manpower. Recently, Russian MP Alexander Borodai, who stood at the origins of aggression against Ukraine, made a defeatist statement. He complained about problems in the army and the lack of clear goals of the war. Borodai made a bold speech in Moscow at the Congress of the Union of the Russian People's Organization. At the beginning of his speech, he complained that the majority of the population in Russia does not support the so-called SVO and wants it to end as soon as possible. There is a declaration of unity, but we do not have the unity in society. It is not true that it exists. We have very few of those who participate in the SVO in one way or another, somewhere around 5.7 million at most. The rest pretend that this is not their war. You there, hurry up! Finish it already, because we are all very tired of this war. This is the position of the majority of society, the Russian deputy said. He also noted the lack of a clear ideology in the Kremlin. Even the top leadership of the Russian Federation does not know what will happen after the war is over. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz congratulated Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump on his victory Wednesday and stressed that his country will remain a reliable transatlantic partner. Speaking to reporters at the Chancellery in Berlin, Scholz said, President Trump will take office at a time of great challenges and crises. The United States and the President have a central role to play in overcoming them. Certainly many things will be different under an administration led by Donald Trump. Donald Trump has always made that clear publicly, he added. Trump was elected the 47th President of the United States on Wednesday, an extraordinary comeback for a former president who refused to accept defeat four years ago, sparked a violent insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, was convicted of felony charges and survived two assassination attempts. With a win in Wisconsin, Trump cleared the 270 electoral votes needed to clinch the presidency. Donald Trump hat die Wahl klar gewonnen. Dazu gratuliere ich ihm. Präsident Trump wird sein Amt in einer Zeit großer Herausforderungen und Krisen antreten. Bei ihrer Bewältigung kommen den Vereinigten Staaten und ihren Präsidenten eine zentrale Rolle zu. Deshalb hat eine Präsidentschaftswahl in den USA immer Auswirkungen auf über Amerika hinaus. Sicher wird vieles unter einer von Donald Trump geführten Regierung anders. Das hat Donald Trump auch immer öffentlich klar gemacht. Unsere Botschaften sind klar. Erstens, Deutschland bleibt ein verlässlicher transatlantischer Partner. Wir wissen um den Beitrag, den wir für diese Partnerschaft leisten und auch in Zukunft leisten werden. Das gilt auch mit Blick auf die Bedrohung, die Russland nach Auffassung aller NATO-Alliierten für die Sicherheit im euroatlantischen Raum darstellt. 
Zweitens. Die Europäische Union muss eng zusammenstehen und geschlossen handeln. Als deutscher Bundeskanzler wirke ich darauf hin. Ich habe mich heute mit Präsident Macron ausgetauscht. Morgen treffen wir in Budapest die anderen Staats- und Regierungschefs aus Europa. The recurrent storms in eastern Spain that led to massive flooding last week and killed at least 217 people, mostly near Valencia, dumped rain on Barcelona on Monday. At the city's airport heavy rain lashed planes on the tarmac and a terminal roof sprang a leak. Spanish Transport Minister Oscar Puente said that the rains had forced air traffic controllers to change the course of 15 flights operating at the airport, located on the southern flank of the city. Puente also said he was suspending all commuter trains in northeast Catalonia, a region with 8 million people, on request from civil protection officials. Mobile phones in Barcelona screeched with an alert for extreme and continued rainfall on the southern outskirts of the city. The alert urged people to avoid any normally dry gorges or canals. Several highways have been closed due to flooding. Classes were cancelled in Tarragona a city in southern Catalonia about halfway between Barcelona and Valencia, after a red alert for rains was issued.